Today we're going to start on uh, the Lord's Prayer. I've, I've just entitled this, Teach Us to Pray, because that's what the disciples were asking Jesus. And this is, this is found in Matthew 6, kind of in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount. And he actually he goes into uh, this formula, I would say, more of a, a formula for prayer, not the specific words. I don't, I don't think that he uh, meant us to say these exact words every time we you know, think about this, that we pray some repetitious prayer but that we pray in a manner like he laid out here. And so we're going to dive into it. Yeah, Matthew 6, 9 to 14. Let's just read it first. And, and he says, uh, in verse 8, he says, Therefore do not be like them, talking about the Pharisees who play, pray vain repetitions and, and uh, they just want to be seen by people. He says, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you need even before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think 14 and 15 are pretty important verses too that we, we should read as we read this prayer. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So, Lord, we just thank you for this prayer, Lord. We thank you for this model of prayer. And we ask that you'd give us wisdom and understanding this morning into, into how to use it, how to apply it to our lives. And I pray that we would do that. And we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, let your word come alive in our hearts this morning. Let it, let it be more real uh, than it's ever been, Lord. And we thank you. Open our eyes that we might see the things that you want us to see this morning in Jesus' name. Amen? So people call it the Lord's Prayer, but again, I think he meant it to be a model prayer. And, uh, you know, Jesus, just before this, he's telling, he's, telling, he's telling the disciples, don't pray the vain repetitions like the heathen do and thinking that they'll be heard because of, you know, they, they talk so much and, and they, they, they're seen of people. And... I think the first, the first uh, important truth that, that we want to touch on is the first thing he says is pray our Father, our Father in heaven. And, and praying to our Father implies that you have a relationship with him. If he's your Father, that implies relationship. And the only way to have a relationship with the Father, we know, is through the Son. Amen? We have to have a relationship with Jesus to pray to the Father. And so he's Papa. He's Daddy. He's Father. And we need to pray in faith because we, we don't see God, but we believe he, he is who he says he is. Amen? He's in heaven. And so we need to direct our thoughts toward heaven, direct our thoughts toward him. And uh, there's just been a lot of talk about heaven and just the fact that I've been reading a book about heaven and, and other people have been talking about heaven. We need to think about heavenly things. And so as we pray, we need to just move into that heavenly gear that our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so we need to thank God that we can call him Father. The very first thing, well, Lord, I thank you that I can call you Father today. Thank you that I have a relationship with you today. Thank you that you're my Papa, that you're my Daddy, and I can call you Father today because of the blood of Jesus. Ephesians 3.1 3, says that we've been adopted. We're his sons through Jesus Christ, adopted into the family. Amen? 1 John 3.2 says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Now we are the sons of God. We don't have to wait till that day, or we don't have to wait till heaven. Now we are the sons of God. We've been adopted now. We're sons of God today. He's our daddy today. He's our father today. Amen? Hallelujah. Because you're sons, God has sent forth his spirit into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. That's what the scripture tells us in, in Galatians 4, 6. Because you're sons, he sent his spirit into your heart. And in your heart, in your, in your inner man, in your spirit, you're, you're, you're crying out, Abba, Father, Papa, Daddy, I thank you that I have that relationship with you today. <clears throat> so as we talk about the Lord's Prayer, I think Jesus wants us to pray like this, like, thank you, God, for the Father. Thank you that I have a relationship with the Father. That's the first thing that he says, our Father. 
Thank God for the privilege to access the throne of grace. Amen. We can, the Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can access that throne of grace. Jesus made a way by Calvary to the, to the throne of grace, that we can come boldly into the throne room. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. And so when we pray, we just, we just pr- approach the throne of grace saying, Father, thank you today that I can come into the throne room. Thank you, God, that you're my Father. Thank you that I have a relationship with you today in Jesus' name. The next thing he says is, Hallowed be thy name. And to hallow means to, to honor or to see as holy, to speak of as holy, to greatly revere, you know, to, to bring honor to, to set aside as holy and sacred. And that's how we should approach you know, our Lord, thank you that you're holy and you're, you're, you're awesome. I honor you today. I reverence you today. I set aside, aside this time and I just, I want to make you more holy in my life. Because when you're more holy in my life, I become more like you. Amen. And so it speaks of consecration. It speaks of just giving your heart to him because he's holy. Amen. He's, his name is to be hallowed. His name is to be worshipped. It means God is not common. Amen? He's not common. He's not like any other God. He's Elohim. Amen? He's the God of all gods. He's the King of all kings. And so he's not common God. He's not like any other God. He's the God of gods. And so when we come to him, we we say, hallowed be your name, your mighty name, your awesome name, the name above all names, the name that's worthy of praise, the name that stirs me up when I say it. Amen? That's our God. And so so we need to praise him for who he is and what he's done. What he's done for us, what he's done, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's the creator of all things. Amen? Come on, are you with me? He is those things. And so we hallow his name by praising him and, and thanking him for who he is. You know, you could also go in, and I'm going I'm to go into it right now, just think about the names of God. Well, I'm going to go through about seven or eight names of God, Hebrew names of God, if you want to put those up um, on the screen. I think I have, they'll have seven or eight Hebrew names of God. And uh, the first one is Jehovah Sidkenu. And he, it means he's the God of righteousness from Jeremiah 20, 23, 6. He said that, that's his name. That's what it says in Jeremiah 23, 6. That's his name. He's the God of righteousness, our righteousness. And how many know that we have become the righteousness of God in Christ? That's who we become in 2 Corinthians 5.21. We've become the righteousness of God in Christ. So we become righteous because he's righteous. And so we thank him for his righteousness. We thank you, God, that you're righteous. You're the righteous judge. You're the righteous king. And I get to be righteous because of Jesus. And I know I'm not righteous in myself. How many have that feeling about yourself, that you're not very righteous this morning? And, and, and that you're not very good even? And that you miss it and blow it? Anybody? Anybody blow it this week? Anybody blow it this morning already? No. Don't answer. <laughs> but we, we, we do, we follow, we, we come up short, but he's our righteousness. Jehovah Sidkenu. The second one, Jehovah Mekadesh. Mekadesh. I'm not sure if I'm saying that exactly right. It's kind of like McLeod, but not quite. Uh, Mekadesh, or, and, and uh, Kedesh actually means holy. And so, the God who sanctifies. We've been made right with God. He sanctified us, and he is the God who sanctifies. Amen. He is the holy God, and we become holy through the blood of Jesus. Leviticus 27 and 8 says that he is holy. His name is holy. I just want to read that for you. Leviticus 27 and 8. Just in case you don't believe me. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. And you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So he's the Lord who sanctifies us. He's the Lord who makes us right and puts us in right standing with God. That's what sanctification is. It's, it's becoming holy. It's becoming right. Amen. It's, it's, a, it's that work that he does, that sanctification process that he works in us. And we become who he wants us to be. Amen. And, and it happens instantly when we receive Jesus 
We, we, we get that sanctification, that washing, that renewal. We, we get born again, our spirit's reborn, and we're going to live forever. But then it takes a long time to work it out. It takes a lifetime to work out the sanctification process, that we become more like him. We become conformed to the image of, of Jesus. It takes time, amen? And we just, you know, we work out that old man, just we, God keeps chiseling away at it. And, you know, our spirit is new, but the old man has to be conform to that image and it it takes some time so be patient amen don't give up like sarah already said this morning god is at work he's working in our hearts and he's doing he's making us he's sanctifying us so his name jehovah mekadesh mekadesh and the third one jehovah shalom how many have heard of that one shalom uh, jehovah shalom he's a god of peace we have peace with god and peace in our hearts because of jesus judges six twenty four. the they said they named him the God of peace. This was um, Gideon after he, you know, had a, an encounter with an angel and God, God called him to a great work and something. Gideon said he's the God of peace. He's the God of peace. And how many know that Jesus also said that his peace he leaves with, with us? It's my peace I leave with you. It's, it's not a peace that the world gives. Not the, it's not a peace that the world can even take away. He gives us his peace. How many know he's the prince of peace? He is the peaceful one. And it's even a, a fruit of the Spirit, peace. So God comes to have, bring peace in our lives. So we just thank God for His peace, amen? Thank God. So we're, we're still hallowing His name, amen? His name means all these things. His name is peace. His name means peace. His name means peace in our life. And so when we pray, we just thank God. Thank you, God, for peace today. Thank you, God, for the Prince of Peace that dwells in my heart. Thank you that, that you are the, the Prince of Peace, that you, your name is peace. And thank you that you give me peace today. How many could use a little more peace in your life? How many could use a little more peace in your home, in your relationships? He's the Prince of Peace, and just thank him for his peace. Invite his peace into your home. Say, God, thank you that you're the Prince of Peace. Lord, I invite your peace into my heart. I invite your peace into my home. Come and rest on me. I need your peace today. The next one, he's Jehovah Shammah. I I heard somebody mention this already. I think it was... Debbie mentioned it in prayer this morning. Jehovah Shammah. He's the, it means God is here. Or God is there. How many know God is everywhere? He's Jehovah Shammah. He's the ever-present one. He's, he's present everywhere. When you, wherever you go, He's there. Amen? I don't care what you're doing, He's there. That's a scary thought. Whatever you're doing, He's there. Hello. Wherever you go, he's there. Whatever you're up to, he's there. Whatever you're looking at, he's there. Whatever you're listening to, he's there. He's there. Our God is present everywhere. Amen? Jehovah Shammah. He'll always be with us. He said he'd never leave us. You can find that in Ezekiel 48, 35. Jehovah Shammah. The cool thing about these names of God is they're, they're also true in the New Covenant. You can find all these names in the New Covenant. Amen? He's Jehovah Shammah today. He said in Romans that he won't leave us or forsake us. He'll never leave us. He's always with us. Amen? It also says that that he goes before us, and he's our rear guard. He surrounds us as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem. He's always there. He's always with us. Jehovah Shammah. So you can just greet God in the morning and say, God, thank you that you're Jehovah Shammah in my life today. Lord, you're with me today. When I go out, you're with me. When I come in, you're with me. I'm blessed in my going out and my coming in because you're with me. Thank you that you're always there. Wherever you are, I want to be there. I don't want to go any place if you're not there, amen? That's what Moses said. He said, you know, God, if you're not with us, I don't want to go. So let's go with God, amen? He's Jehovah Shammah, the one that's with you. Jehovah Rophi. Anybody need healing today? He's Jehovah God that heals. Exodus 15, 26, 6 says, I am the God who heals you. We read it in, in Isaiah 53 this morning. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes, we are healed. He's the healer today. We're healed by Jesus' stripes. We're healed in Jesus' name. How many believe in healing? How many have been healed yourself in your own bodies? Experienced some, some crazy, miraculous healing in your own body? Many of you have. Amen? 
I know I've mentioned before, my wife used to have a heart murmur. And she would get up and her heart would race. And it was going on for years and years. And we were at a meeting uh, in Superior, Wisconsin one time. And, and somebody was just preaching and they said, right now somebody's being healed of a heart murmur. And Ann grabbed a hold of that and she was healed. Never had another heart murmur. Hallelujah. Can't find that anymore. Amen. So God just does miracles like that. And, you know, and sometimes you pray and pray for somebody and they go to the grave. And we, I don't, we'll never have an answer for those till we get there someday. But you know what? We believe in healing. Amen. So he's Jehovah Rothi, our healer. So when you go to God in the morning or when you pray, you can just say, God, thank you. That you're my peace. Lord, that you're there all the time. Lord, that you're my righteousness today. Thank you, God, that you're my healer, that you heal my body, and that I walk in health today. I walk in divine health. Lord, I thank you. I always like to pray this prayer that, 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 that we also find in the Scripture, that God said he would bless our bread and water and drive sickness from our bodies. And so just pray. I just pray that, you know, over my food. Lord, thank you that you bless my bread and water and drive sickness from my bodies. Thank you that I don't have to be sick. Amen? I'm the healed of the Lord. And I think we should, we should practice that. Practice living in the healing that Jesus purchased for us. And walk in it. Begin to walk in it and believe God for it. Amen? So he's the healer. He's the healing Jesus. How about Jehovah Jireh? You know Jehovah Jireh? He's our provider. Amen? And in uh, Genesis twenty two fourteen, 14, it's the story of Abraham. And where God called him to sacrifice his son. And then at the last minute... He said, don't touch the boy. I've, I've, checked, I've tested your faith, and I know that you're faithful. He said, he looked, and there was a ram caught in a thicket. And he sacrificed the ram instead of his son. And so God provided a sacrifice, and God provided Jesus as our sacrifice. And so he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he named that place Jehovah Jireh, God the God who provides. And he is that for us. Amen. He's, he's also El Shaddai. This is, this is a, bonus, a bonus one here. He's El Shaddai. He's the God of plenty. He's the God of increase. He's the all-sufficient one. It actually means the God of the mountain, Shaddai. He's the, mount, he's the, he's the God of the mountain. He's, he's the all-sufficient one. He owns the mountains. Amen? He's, he's king over the mountains. He's El Shaddai. Somebody said he's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. He's... <laughs> He's, he's got it all. He owns it all. And he's got enough for you. Amen? He's got enough for you. And don't be afraid if God prospers you. Don't be against prosperity. Don't be against prosperity. Only a fool would be against prosperity. I want to prosper so that I can be a blessing. We should, we should have, if, if that's our heart, that's our attitude that, God, I want, to, I want to prosper so I can be a blessing. You can't be a blessing if you're not prospering. You can't give away money if you're not prospering yourself. Amen? So God wants us to prosper, and He wants us to be in health. And so, hey, I'm okay if God prospers me. In fact, God will prosper you if you do things His way. If you give, it'll be given unto you. Amen? If you sow, you will reap. It's just it's, it's the Word of God. It, it happens. He's going to prosper you. He's going to bless you as you bless, bless others. And so we need to have a heart of blessing. We need to live to give. That's what, I, I, that's what I love to preach and teach. We need, a, we need a live to give. Our motive should be to give more. I want to give more. How many try to increase your giving every year? You should think about it. You should pray about it. Okay, this year I gave 10%. Next year I want to give 12%. Next year I want to, the year after that I want to give 14%. Whatever God leads you to do. Someday you might give, get to the place where you give 50% of your income away. Some, someday you might give it all away. Wouldn't that be a great thing? Just let's just give it away. You talk about being bound to this world and hanging on to this world and stuck to this world. Money is a good test of where our heart is. Money is a good test. Things are a good test. Possessions are a good test. Can you give them away? Can you share it? Next week we're going to take up an offering for Ukraine. Ann and I have been working with... Uh, a couple there that we really trust, and they're great people. I've known them for 30 years, and uh, we've ministered in their church. We've been there. We've stayed in their house. We, we know all their kids. It's a beautiful story, but we're gonna, we figured out a way to help them, 
And we figured out a way to get money there. So far, it's working. So next week, we're going to take up an offering for Ukraine, and maybe we'll just leave it open for a few weeks uh, when you want to participate. And we'll just send them small amounts, three or 400 at a time, 200 at a time, whatever we feel comfortable with. So we'll do that. We'll give some away. Amen? So he's Jehovah Jireh. He's got enough. Jehovah Nisi is the next one. How many have heard of Jehovah Nisi? Our banner. There used to be a song about... Uh, He's our banner. God is, God is my banner. He's, Jesus is our banner. His banner over us is love, the scripture tells us. And Exodus 17, 15 is, is where we read about Jehovah Nisi, our banner, our victor. He's the one who brings the victory. How many know that you wave the victory banner? You know, you, when your team is winning or when you're in the parade or wherever you want to show that you're victorious, you wave the flag, you wave the victory banner. And that's what God does over your life. He's waving the victory banner over your life because you've been, you've been engaged and incorporated into Christ. Amen? You've been bought with a price and you're in Christ. You're part of His team. You're, you're a son and a daughter of God. And so Jesus is waving the banner of love over you, the victory over you. There's victory marked on your life. How many know that you win? Any winners here today? You're victorious in Jesus. You're a winner. Amen? You're sitting next to a winner. Look at him once. See what a winner looks like. Tell him you're a winner. You win. Hey, the devil can't the devil can't beat you. The devil can't take you out. You win in Jesus. He's got no hold on you. Amen. As a matter of fact, as Sarah already said, you need to cancel his assignment if he's been pestering you. Tell him that he's that ugly rooster and get out of here in Jesus' name. Amen? He has no place in your life, no place in your home, no, no place in your, in your plan, in your purpose. He's a defeated foe. Unless you let him, unless you invite him, you need to close that door. Amen? If you've invited him in, you need to close that door and repent. And say, God... I'm sorry, and I don't want that. And thank you for washing me and cleansing me. Thank you, Lord, for even the the stain of sin being washed away. Where I've opened up a door, I close it in Jesus' name. And we need to live free from that kind of thinking, amen? Being afraid of the devil and afraid of the dark and afraid of creepy things. And We take authority over creepy things, amen? Everything that creeps, take authority over it in Jesus' name. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner. He's our victor. Do you like like running around with flags? Any flag runners here? Isn't it kind of fun sometimes? Where were we? In the Philippines? I don't know. Were you guys there when we we did the... They had their Olympics and stuff going on, and we ran around with these flags around the gymnasium. I think it was me and Steve Peterson. And Were you there, Loretta? I can't remember if, if you guys... Did you guys participate in that? Sarah? And we ran around the whole gymnasium with these flags and, and, and just waving these flags of, of victory, really, and celebrating. And, and uh, the teams were celebrating. The different, different teams were running around. We had our, our American team that ran around the gymnasium and we were waving these flags of victory. And there's just something about celebrating victory. Oh, boy. There's something about, come on, Joel, you know what I'm talking about. You like to win. There's something about celebrating victory, amen? Anybody like to lose? Any losers in here? How many like to win? How many like to just charge after the victory and take the victory and celebrate the victory? Celebrate the win. It's fun to win. It's no fun to lose, amen? There are no losers in here. We're, this is the winner's club. You gotta have a you gotta have a something signed to get into this place, amen. It's called the covenant of blood, Jesus Christ. When you receive him, you get into the winner's club. Where you live forever, amen, where he washes your sins, where he washes away your regrets and your pain and your shame, where he he just turns you into a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Hallelujah, we get to live forever. We're going to rule and reign forever with Jesus Christ. 
Amen? What kind of mansion are you going to have? What kind of place are you going to have? Oh, we're going to talk about that in a few weeks. Where are you going to live? What's it going to look like? Hallelujah. Aren't you thank- thankful for Jesus today? What he's done in, in your heart. Amen. He's changed you. He's given you hope. How many of you are the people of hope today? We're the people who have life today. We overflow today. Any overflowers in here today? You've got something bubbling on, on the inside of you about ready to burst? That's called the presence of God. That's called the joy of the Holy Spirit. That's called the life in the Spirit. Working on the inside and wanting to come out. Wanting to spill over. Amen? Wanting to touch somebody. Wanting to touch a, a, a negative, crooked person. A negative, hurting person. That's what that Spirit on the inside of you is looking for. Somebody that it can minister to. Because that's Jesus in you. In the winner circle. Amen? To share the winning life of Jesus Christ with others. That's our call. That's our purpose. You came here today looking for your purpose. That's your purpose. To share the winning life of Jesus Christ with others. Doesn't mean it's going to be all easy. Doesn't mean there's going to be no struggle, no pain. You might have to suffer. You might have to go through some tremendous hard things. You might have to take a physical beating for him. Anybody want to sign up for that? Can you imagine being tortured because of your faith? Hey, the day could come, even in this country, where you have to take a stand and say, no, I will not deny him. I would rather die. I would rather you shoot me or hit me or beat me. I will not deny him. That's where our faith needs to get to, amen? That's where our faith needs to get to. Hallelujah. That's all under Jehovah Nisi, I think. Our victor. That's the last one I have. There's, there's actually a few more, but these are the, the ones that, that I chose. Jehovah Ro, Roha. Roha, or they, some, it, it's also Jehovah Rea. It's like he's the shepherd of the sheep. Rea means shepherd. Jehovah Rohi, Rea, the shepherd of the sheep. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen? I don't need to want because he's my shepherd. I don't have any need because he's my shepherd. How many of the shepherd brings you out and brings you in? The shepherd cares for you. The shepherd watches out for you. The shepherd feeds you. The shepherd waters you. The shepherd does all these things for you. Amen? So, if you, if you notice, we're not very far in the Lord's Prayer here. Hallowed be thy name. We're talking about hallowing his name. These are just some of the names of God. I just, I'm just throwing these out so that you can remind yourself who he is that you're praying to. Your father, he is all these things. He is your, your righteousness. He is the God who sanctifies. He is the God of peace. He is God who is here, God who is there, God who is everywhere. He is Jehovah Rapha. The God who heals you. He is Jireh, your provider. He's Nisi, your banner, your victor. He's Roha, or Rhea. He's your shepherd. We can go to him and pray to him as our shepherd, as our prince of peace, as our king, as our, as our savior, as our God of righteousness, the God who heals us. I mean, it's, it's so wonderful to just... And I think that's what Jesus was saying. When you go to God... Just remind yourself of who he is. Speak it out, who he is. Hallowed be our name. Glorious is your name because of all these things. Amen? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done is the next line. Thy kingdom come. Come. I, th- I think this is really a, a crucial part of the prayer as well. Thy kingdom come. Pray for the kingdom. God's kingdom to come in your life, in yourself, in your spouse, in your home. God, I want your kingdom. I want your kingdom purposes on my job. Why am I on this job? Why am I working in this place? Why am I doing, maybe it's a tedious job, or you know, maybe it's a job where you're just not being fulfilled as much as you'd like, or whatever it is, and you just say, God, I want your kingdom to come here. I want more of your kingdom here. I don't want to just do a job just for money. I want to be effective for the kingdom. I want to operate in the kingdom. Even in in this secular job, I want to operate in the kingdom and and with kingdom principles. Amen? And kingdom stuff going on. Thy kingdom come. Too often we pray for our way. How many many have noticed that this is a good way to 
check yourself in your prayer. How many are praying, God, help me with this. God, do this. God, I want to do this. God, help with this. That's our way, amen? How about if we pray God's kingdom? Lord, let your kingdom come in this situation. I want to see your kingdom here. Lord, I don't know what to do, but, but I want to see your kingdom. I want to see your will be done. I don't care about my will. I want your will to be done. Kingdom stuff. We, we have to have kingdom prayers. May I have a kingdom mindset today. Let me, in, let me be influenced by you. Let me be influenced by you. Amen. Pray for his kingdom to come in your church. Pray for his kingdom to come in your pastor. Pray for revival. Pray for his kingdom to come in your country, in your state, in your city. You know, pray that, that will pray for liberal giving. That's kingdom giving. Lord, let there be liberal giving in this church and in my life. May, may I be a liberal giver. That's kingdom thinking. I want to give more. I want to give more. Hallelujah. Let your kingdom come. Lord, I want to see a harvest of souls. When's the last time you prayed for souls? That's kingdom thinking, amen? I want to see, I want to see souls come into the kingdom. I want to see people born again. I want to see my friends at school born again. I want to see my friends in youth group born again. Or I want to see my friends wherever, at work, my neighbors. I want to see them born again. I want to see him knowing Jesus. Are you willing to talk about him? Are you willing to mention his name? Are you willing to go up to a stranger and just say, hey, do you know Jesus? Wouldn't that be scary? Just to go up to a stranger and say, hey, do you know who Jesus Christ is? Try it sometime. Might be fun. God might just open up a door, especially if you're led by the Spirit. Amen? The, the sad part is some of us will never be led by the Spirit because we're too afraid. And the Spirit might be leading and we won't do it. You've got to have some boldness to share Jesus. So we should pray for boldness. That's a kingdom purpose. God, let me have some boldness. I need some boldness. I want to talk to people about Jesus. Give me some boldness. I don't want to hide out and be afraid of all that. Give me some boldness, even in the, in the high school or in the college or wherever I might, in the workplace. I want to talk to these people about Jesus. Lord, I pray for opportunities. Don't worry. If you pray that way, God will give you opportunities. People will be knocking on your door. But we have to pray kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Lord, at work today, let your kingdom come. Lord, let your kingdom come in the workplace today. I want, it, I want your kingdom. More than anything, let your kingdom come. And then just say, God, give me boldness. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Pray for your city, your state, your nation, your leaders. God would pour out his spirit on America. That's kingdom stuff. Amen. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. We'll pick up on give us this day our daily bread next week. And I, I want you guys to think about something because this one's been bugging me a little bit. I want you to pray about and lead us not in temp into temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. Would you pray about that one line a little bit this week? Say, God, what does that mean? Because how many know that God doesn't tempt anybody? The scripture says that, that when we're tempted and, and when we're, uh, you know, when we struggle, it's, it's ourself. Amen? It's us. God doesn't tempt any man, the scripture says. So would you help me to discern that next week? I have some ideas. I've been reading about it, studying about it, praying about it. But would you think about it and pray about it? It'll give you something to, to do to get involved in this. Um, just what does it mean? You know, to... I don't want to be tempted. Lead me not into temptation or struggles. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, I'll just give you a, a, little, a little clue here. In the Old Testament, when they were, when they were uh, the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, God opened it up for them, and, you know, they walked across on dry land, and then they, he closed up the sea. And the first thing they do, they just, God just took them through water. The first thing that they do when they get into the, into the desert is just dry. And they're complaining that there's no water. And they're tested. 
And so sometimes temptation and testing are kind of the same word. And it, if you study it, 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 it kind of can go both ways, temp, temptation or, or testing. And so he, he, he brought them to a place of testing. One way we could look at it is, God, I, I don't want to be brought to the t- place of where I have to be tested. Amen? That's just a little, uh, a little appetizer for you to think about, because I'd really like you to pray about it, and we'll talk about it more next week. Lead us not in temptation. I'll, I'll even ask you what you think it means next week, okay? Hallelujah. Actually, if you, if you study that line out too, by kingdom come, probably the proper way to say that would be, come kingdom of God. Come kingdom of God. It's almost like, it's more of almost like an order. Come kingdom of God. Yes, I agree. Come kingdom of God. I want that. Amen. I've carried a burden.